what we're going to be doing danger in the cornfield in lesson seven in reading today okay so yesterday you began the story danger in the cornfield you were supposed to read it on your own and today we're going to do it together i'm going to make a separate video with a read along video with the story and we'll be answering the questions in this video okay so before we begin let's do a little review on the study words from the previous lessons. Now, do you remember what fade means? Fade. F-A-D-E. Fade. So fade means to become pale or less bright. Fade means to become pale or less bright. Okay? So do you remember what scampered means? Scampered. You must have, you should have read that word in the story yesterday. Scampered. So scamper means run around in a lively and playful way. Scampered means run around in a lively and playful way. Scampered. S C A M P E R E D. S C A M P E R E D scampered. Next word is terror. What does terror mean? So terror is a feeling of great fear. Terror is a feeling of great fear. Ter terror. T E R R O R. Terror. T E R R O R Terra. What does the word waddled mean? Waddled. So waddled means walked with short steps swinging from side to side. Waddled means walked with short steps swinging from side to side. Kind of like how a duck walks or a penguin walks. A waddled. W A D D L E D W A D D L E D waddled And what does yelp mean? Yelp So yelp is a short sharp bark Yelp is a short sharp bark So you should hear where you live there must be dogs around who let out yelps very often, right? They let out short, sharp barks, okay? Yelp. Y-E-L-P. Y-E-L-P. So here, after reading the story, Danger in the Cornfield, the instructions say, write the word from the story that completes each sentence. Write the word from the story that completes each sentence. Mrs. Raccoon pushed the twins up a big blank tree. Mrs. Raccoon pushed the twins up a big blank tree. You're going to find that word in the story. So you may have to look back if you can't remember. Blank foolishly scrambled down the tree and ran toward his mother. Blank foolishly scrambled down the tree and ran toward his mother. What should go there? It's in the story. Mrs. Raccoon sank her sharp teeth into the dog's blank. Mrs. Raccoon sank her sharp teeth into the dog's blank. Right? So here now we're going to look at figures of speech. Figures of speech. So if figures of speech are words or expressions used to mean something different than their exact meaning. Right? Figures of speech are words or expressions used to mean something different than their exact meanings. Let's look at this figure of speech. Right? It says bag and baggage. What do you think? Bag 
bag and baggage mean? Hmm? So bag and baggage means with all one's belongings. Right? Is another way of saying with all one's belongings. Let's say I saw Mr. George with his bag and baggage. Meaning that you saw him with all of his belongings. Let's look at this figure of speech. Or one's bread and butter. Right, one's bread and butter. Do you know what that means? One's bread and butter. So that means one's means of livelihood. That's the way they're able to make money to feed themselves, right? To take care of themselves. So one's bread and butter could mean like one's job, okay? And here's our last figure of speech. And it is to kick the bucket to kick the bucket what does to kick the bucket mean maybe you, i should have you ask your parents that that's your homework ask your parents what does to kick the bucket mean right So here, the instructions say, circle the letter of the meaning of each underlined figure of speech. Circle the letter of the meaning of each underlined figure of speech. The dog picked up their trail. Picked up their trail is the figure of speech. The dog picked up their trail. Does that mean the dog began to follow them by smelling their scent? Or the dog picked up the path the raccoons were on? What does it mean? Mrs. Raccoon wanted to find a creek so she could throw the dog off their trail. Mrs. Raccoon wanted to find a creek so she could throw the dog off their trail. This is a figure of speech. Throw the dog off their trail. Did Mrs. Raccoon, Mrs. Raccoon wanted to throw the dog into the creek? Or Mrs. Raccoon wanted to get into the water so the dog would lose their scent? Which one is it? You're going to circle the letter of the one that is correct. Let's move on to page 18. And here, we're going to do the Bible verse again for this story. And it is, Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. Psalm 104 verse 20. Thou makest darkness and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. Psalm 104 verse 20. I want you to memorize this verse. Okay? So regarding this verse, um, this story happened at night, remember? And if we had been there, we would have been, had a hard time seeing the raccoon family or the dog. Yet both of them could see and smell each other. And most of the animals that creep out at night can see in the dark. Remember what we call those animals? Call them nocturnal. So think of some animals again that you hear or some animals that you know may come out at night. Okay? So that is the way God made them. And they sleep during the day and hunt during the cooler night. Okay? So here you're going to circle the letters of the reasons you think creatures come out at night. Circle the letters of the reasons you think creatures come out at night. It is cooler at night. God created them to sleep in the daytime. There is no danger at night. Or the creatures they eat for food also come out at night. 
So you're going to circle the ones that are, that you think, re um, reasons that you think creatures come out at night. More, you will, you can, you could circle more than one, alright? You could circle more than one. And now, I want you to... You're going to turn to your to page 21 in your reader to the poem at dusk the wild creatures move so dusk is the time of day just after the sun has set when it is beginning to get dark outside right so you know some of you play outside and when it's becoming dark Mommy says, come in, come back inside. And that is what you call dusk, when, it's, when the sun has set and it's just becoming dark. Okay? At dusk, the wild creatures move. At dusk, when the sun falls over the rim of the world, then the deer feeds at the forest edge. At dusk, when bits of gray light still linger, then the fox roams the ridges in search of food. At dusk, when shadows gather and darkness spreads, then the bat tumbles through the night air. At dusk, when stars open their sharp silver eyes, then the whippoorwill clamors from deep in the forest, deep in the woods. Sorry. At dusk, when the moon waxes bright in the sky, then the raccoon visits the farmer's cornfield. At dusk, when the night black dark deepens, then the owl hoots and all little things tremble. At dusk, the safe, in the safety of the twilight, then the wild creatures move. Remember we just did figures of speech? And here's the first figure of speech when the sun falls over the rim of the world can the sun actually fall over the rim of the world no but this means that the sun has set is setting right it has set right have you ever watched a sunset where the sun looks as if it's going behind the sea all right so that's what they mean here when the sun falls over the rim of the world really means when the sun has set okay Another figure of speech we see is here. When stars open their sharp silver eyes. When stars open their sharp silver eyes. Stars don't actually have eyes, but this means when the stars have now come out in the night. Okay? The moon waxes bright in the sky. The moon waxes bright in the sky. Means that the moon has grown brighter. It's got, it's, it became brighter. It's becoming brighter. Now that it has become night. Okay. So here we're going to answer the question. It says write the word from the poem that tells what, what each wild creature does at dusk. Write the word from the poem that tells what each wild creature does at at dusk. So the deer, what does the deer do at dusk? You're gonna find the, what the deer does at dusk here. The deer feeds at the forest edge. What does it do? What does the deer do? It feeds. So you're gonna put feeds right here. Feeds. Alright, and you're gonna do the same for the rest of the Creatures. Now turn to page 19 and you, you're going to be doing oral reading, right? Remember we did oral reading over on page 15 and 16. Yesterday you had to read this paragraph out loud. So here you have to 
read out loud again using rules. It says when you are in oral reading class, use good posture. So mean you sit up straight, all right? And you pay attention when someone else is reading. So when someone else is reading, you don't talk and you don't read while they are reading. Read out loud while they are reading. You listen to them and follow along in your book. So here, use the oral reading rules you learned as you listen to the paragraph being read aloud. So use the oral reading rules as you learned as you listen to the paragraph being read aloud. So I want you to sit up straight and listen while I'm reading to you. Okay? Then she turned to face the dog as it ran into the open, not far from where she stood. The dog stopped in his tracks. Then he circled and tried to get behind her. Mrs. Raccoon kept turning to face him as he ran around, looking for a chance to jump in and grab her. Her wide open mouth showed sharp white teeth. Okay. Then now you're going to do your we remember section. So underline the bold study word that completes each sentence. Underline the bold study word that completes each sentence. So you're going to read each sentence properly. And you're going to underline the study word. Remember we reviewed our study words just before the lesson began. Okay. You're going to underline the correct one, okay? And that's the end of your lesson seven.